Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. Got another PreSonus Studio One tutorial video for you. Today I want to talk briefly about the Browse window, which you can find down here. See right there where it says Browse? If you click on that, it opens up this window over to the right. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here, and if you didn't know it's there, it's a very useful place for you. So here are the basic, the first starting point down at the bottom. Here's what all you can see. I'll expand this out a little bit. You can make this any size you want. So the five basic features down here, there's a home, which I never use, but it's there the first time you open it, this is what you'll see. And it lets you decide which one of the thing, these beautiful things you want to go do or see. Um, and then after selecting something like effects, which would be all your plugins, uh, then you can get to the other selections here. Clicking that home button takes you back to that spot or just clicking these cycles you through these five sections. Now the one that I use the most is effects. That's where all your plugins will be found. Um, but there's also instruments. If you use the virtual instruments within Studio One or if you install your own, they'll all show up here. And what's neat about this view is you can see things a number of ways. You can see folders uh, for kind of where everything is stored. So here there's a PreSonus folder for the PreSonus instruments, audio units. You can see a flat list of everything sorted alphabetically. You can sort them by vendor. So there's some Apple plugins, there's some Native Instruments plugins, there's some PreSonus plugins. That's the way I like to do it. So I know, I know, say there's a, a Native Instruments contact for that I want to grab. It's easy to find. Or by category, which this doesn't do so much on the instrument side. A little bit simpler, uh, simpler sampler or synth. Um, I typically just go with the with the vendor route for instruments. But what's neat about the effects page, which is where all your plugins are. Uh, this I definitely like to sort by vendor. You can see here's a flat list of all your plugins. Not terribly helpful. Uh, category can be helpful, and I've done this for a while. Uh, under PreSonus, for example, they have analysis plugins, delay plugins, distortion plugins, dynamics. Uh, that's pretty cool, especially if you're starting out and maybe you're just using the stock PreSonus plugins, which I highly recommend. Um, this way you can kind of see when you're looking for a compressor, you know, okay, here they are. After a while, you'll get to know the names and you can flip over to what I like to do, which is vendor uh, sorting, where I can just see all my PreSonus plugins in alphabetical order and I can find them quickly because I know what they are. Uh, you also have things like Melodyne, any Apple plugins. Uh, I've got a couple from Meter Plugs, a couple from Native Instruments, Dynamic Range, the TT Dynamic Range Meter. They're all sorted under who makes them. Uh, and my, my Waves plugins are down here. So it makes it just easier to find as opposed to having them all there. Now, why does it matter that you have them over here? Because PreSonus lets you drag and drop plugins onto a track. Now, you've probably seen that already. I'll show you more of that in depth and all that you can do with that in a future video. But just so you know, that's why when I'm mixing, this window stays open kind of narrow over here and I'm dragging. It usually looks just like this. I'm seeing my PreSonus plugins and I can drag over and instantiate any of them at the drop of a hat. A couple other things about the browse window. Uh, you've got the sounds section, which is, uh, I guess it has to do with, honestly, I don't know. I think it has to do with mostly PreSonus Studio One, both loops and different sound effects. I'm not sure how that's different from instruments, so we're going to skip that. Files is basically just a quick browser. If you're looking for a file on your desktop, uh, you can just go to your desktop and drag it in, or you can use this and go find things on your, both on your computer and also in your Studio One folder and then any servers you have, like if you have SoundCloud hooked in, you can see things that way. I rarely use that. Pool it shows you all the files for this particular song. Now this can be helpful if you accidentally delete something, you can maybe come find it over here and you can sort it by track. Uh, so here are all my unused files that I could probably stand to delete to save some space. But then if I sort them by track, I can see, okay, the vocal double track has these files associated with it. It's a nice way to kind of wrap your head around what's there. And you can sort by type and location and takes, but I tend to go by, if I'm looking for something, I'll come sort it by track and then I'll try to find exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so the, the main function over here for me is the effects page. And what's great about this is you can open and close it with a shortcut. So it's F5, which opens and closes this window. Boom, 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 boom. And F7 also does it. Uh, if you go, if it's open and you hit F5, F6, F7, F8, it cycles through these different ones. I found that F7 opens up the effects. So F7 actually opens and closes this window as well, which is super helpful for quickly grabbing a plug and then making it go away if you don't want it there the whole time. Okay, so that's a good overview of the browse window. Make sure you use it. It was designed for a reason, especially to grab plugins and get things rolling on effects and instruments. Really easy, intuitive way to work. 
Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.